Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Give me a second. Uh, good, good, good. Okay. I can't Sorry know. about that. That was probably my fault. I'm very bad with technology. We almost drowned today many times. Well, that's not good. What what happened? Oh, there? yeah, we would have froze to death. We would have. Well, uh, we, the engines were like steaming. We couldn't figure out what was wrong with them. We shot the engines a few times, said everything was good. So we're like, you know what? Fuck it. No grave but the sea, right? So we, you know, sailed out there and uh, we got some really good footage. Uh, we found some wreckage. Like there was a uh, unidentified floating object. It turned out to be a fender off a cruise ship. This thing is fucking huge. Uh, it was like there was dead seagulls lying around it because I, I don't know what the fuck was wrong with it, but it wasn't good for them. Um, but uh, yeah, we got some real like, it's all foggy and creepy and shit. I'm going to upload that uh, in a bit. It's, it's pretty damn good shit. It's no. pretty good. Now, by the way, this is this is Mormon Shaggy. I think he did come on at one point, but it wasn't announced. I don't remember. I, I think you did come on here once. I've, I've been on here once or twice. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, yeah. I was on that that ingrate surfer was uh, clout chasing. You remember that sack of shit? I know. Surfer, he probably. Yeah, yeah he's uh, not my favorite person. Um, real Why? snake, in my opinion. What's the beef there? Oh, just general snake anus. Just general. Uh, he's not a very good Christian. I, I see him as a uh, a false Christian, a false Christian. But also, the worst of it is uh, he hangs out with Brian Dunn, and uh, yeah, that's real bad company. That's like the worst of company. Well, I can't. You know, that guy's been crying all night because apparently he thinks I've sent like the League of Assassins to kill him or something. He's been crying all over Twitter. About he doesn't it. believe that. He's a moron. But, you know, let me show you this, though. Brian Don. Speaking of Brian Don, and I had a whole segment, but I didn't get time enough to, to plan it all. Now, this ah, is Brian yes. Don on Twitter right here. Uh, oh, I clarified that on my show the other night. Uh, Brian no, no, Dunn no, 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 no. Wait, let, just let me read this. This is this is what he said. Mm -hmm. He said, you want to rape children and hang out with DJ Axel? I don't, whatever. Uh, I don't think you want to rape children, whatever. And I don't even know what I was doing. But uh, then he said, fuck off, Jeffrey. I guess that's your name. I don't know. Then he mm -hmm. said, then he said this. This is always his tell, by the way. And no matter how many times he hears it, he's such a moron. He can't figure it out. He always speaks about himself in third person uh, on an account that he's trying to act like it's not him. And... You can always tell it's him because he always starts defending himself in the third person. And he does that every single time because he's extremely low IQ. Uh, and he has extremely high levels of autism. Uh, yes. Yes. And that, that's why he does that. And he says this, by the way. He admits to being gay. He says. Yes, he's, he's admitted to being gay to me personally. I have uh, the private DMs where I've like gotten into fights with him. And after the fight... Because there's screenshots of him sucking a tranny dick, okay? It, it, it's, it, well, yeah, I mean, and so ultimately it all comes back to, look, Brian, we've got this evidence that you're gay. We've got this confession that you're gay. We've got this unrelated confession that you're gay. We've got this testimony by gay men that you are, in fact, gay. And yet you're still here calling everyone and their mother a fag. It's just like... How, how how for how long must we as a community shoulder this man's like projection now let me read this and i'll switch back to where they can see you he says brian is a fag that's him by the way talking about himself um so he's just admitting that he's gay he's got a wife and kids but he is gay according to his own words here but then he says you literally want to harm children walk into traffic now i don't believe that about you but um I thought the interesting part about that was him admitting to be being gay. Finally, after all these years in public, Brian Dunn, King of Paul, admits to being gay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it. Hopefully, hopefully that will you know help him progress to the place he needs to be, which is reparative therapy, where you know it's where Milo went went, where they can help you not be gay. You know. Because Brian's gayness is like a plague on the entire community. His gayness is like a blight, a pestilence, right? I mean, how many people have suffered because of Brian Dunn's, um, I'm not sure what words we can use here, but uh, Efsler-related activities, basically. Um, I myself have lost a channel to Brian Dunn's homosexuality. 
his flagget tree. Uh, you know, he's well, used uh, to be a big fan of yours. I was told. No, that's uh, that that's a troll. We have been uh, we we have never been friends. I, I have never gotten along with this guy at any point. I once confused him with another uh, fucking uh, YouTuber because I'm a fucking moron. But um, no. No, I, when I first met him, I thought he was someone else. But after that, we got in frequent arguments. He's, in my opinion, a lot like Alistair Mycroft or Diogenes, or at least the character Diogenes plays. I don't know how real that is. But he's um, a, a mega autist. Like, I mean, I'm a bit neurotic. I'll be real with you. But this guy's like, like radioactive levels of fucking um, absolute spurgery. And it's nonstop. Like, he'll do hypocritical things, and anyone else would get it. Anyone else would, like, fucking see that, you know, the shit he's doing is fucking retarded, right? Fucking stupid. Uh, and hypocritical, like calling people gay when everyone knows, you know, he's gay. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it's, really, it's really fucking dumb. Well, and I started making fun of him recently because he just wouldn't leave, you know, wouldn't leave well enough alone. And so no, he, he won't he, go he, away. He had to get, he had to get torched. Uh, and I was, you know, being nice to him, honestly, which is always a mistake, uh, because, and I know that cause I literally wrote the book, uh, well, there were articles, but, uh, on him being a, just a disgusting loser, uh, and a weird fuck. So, um, I already knew all this, honestly, but you know, I don't know. I'm the type of guy that's like, well, he's here. He's trying to be, he's saying he's cool. You know, he's trying to be nice or whatever. And I'll give him a chance. It's always a mistake with this guy though, because, uh, he's a complete psycho. Also, I made myself translucent. There we go. Okay, I fixed that. Yeah, all, um, all true, all true. Um, but it's something you might not know. Uh, you know, he's been desperate to get in the good graces of Godwinson. Godwinson, you know, I got a question. You know, as a man with two children, as a man who clearly doesn't have any problem finding a date for the evening, what is your opinion of a man who can't even, like, get with Elaine, who feels like the need to ask Elaine for a hug, like literally ask Elaine for a hug while they're on a date, right? This guy, <laughs> I talked to Elaine. He made every mistake you could make. The guy's a virgin. Adam Edgelord is a fucking virgin. Well, I didn't know that. Uh, I did know that he said some wildly out-of-pocket things about me um, that I thought was ridiculous. I think I made my thoughts known on that. Uh, he's already. a scumbag. But, he's uh, an absolute scumbag. And moreover, he's very much like Jahan's. If you really look into him, He's a lot more like Jahan's than you'd, you'd suspect. He's incredibly awkward, possibly gay when it comes to the opposite sex. Uh, you know, he uh, he's, he's incredibly antisocial, uh, actively does things to avoid uh, interacting with people or forming any sort of like human connections with other individuals. He, uh, you know, he comes from old money, right? Or what wealth he does have is like old British money. Um, are we still connected here? Yes, yes, you're still here. I'm just letting you talk. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's interesting how similar and to Sargon, there's similarities between him and Sargon, like his same bloviating tendencies, the self self aggrandizement. Uh, you know what was it? What was it? That was seven. He's not as smart as he thinks he is. That's what I'd say about Godwinson, right? He's someone who's been convinced that he's a genius by the other people around him. In reality, he's just kind of an asshole. Yeah, I, you know, I haven't uh, been too friendly towards him lately. I think he retweeted something I said about somebody else or something after I'd already, uh, we'd had our words back and forth. But yeah, he said a lot of wild shit about me and my mother and stuff like that that's... Uh, would take uh, a, a public and personal apology for me to forgive something like that. Um, well, yeah, he says some shit about my family. When my sister, uh, when I no, uh, I stopped talking up, about him because, like, whatever, you know, I got enough shit going. Yeah, on. fuck but, that guy. But, uh, but I mean, yeah, he did say some wildly out of pocket things uh, about me, in my opinion. But again, I'm not even trying to go to war with him. Not worth your time. Not worth your time. Well, I got so much shit going on. I'm just focused on getting the show back on track and everything. But. Uh, right. Yeah, I mean, if you're asking cool. my opinion, uh, yeah, he said some stuff, uh, particularly about my mother, that I didn't, uh, I didn't care for uh, at all because it was just completely made up and false. But um, so you know. far as your opinion goes, what about jobless Johnny? What about what about that fucker? Now, uh, you know, he's, so, he's literally living in Dan's living room and using the guy's kid as a prop. 
That's pretty sad, dude. Guy, He's a pretty sad guy, guy, yeah. Yeah, he is, uh, you know. Now, God, what, just, wait, why did you I'm get into I'm going to try and steal his audience. I'm going to try and take his money, quite frankly. I think I'd, I'd be a better cog than cog, I think. I think so far as bottom feeders, lowest ranking scumbag in the sector goes, I could do a better job than this asshole. I mean, I fuck's sake, true. Mormon Shaggy would be a better cog than cog. I'm not, like, fuck, I'm streaming from a fucking kitchen, right? This is not the fucking optimal setting, but it's better than what cog offers. I That's can true. at least guarantee that. So if you watch cog, you're going to want to take take that that the donation, and you're going to want to get it to Shaggy just as soon as, as my incompetent ass gets gets everything properly set up. Um, I think you could easily you could easily do that. You're of a higher caliber uh, than Cog for certain. I mean, I appreciate so. that. I mean, my dog is a higher caliber of human being than Cog, but I mean, it, it, it well, still I do appreciate. A huge compliment, but yeah, that's true. Um, but how did you get into it with him? Uh, Cog, he uh, just you know what this dude Grim Cheers back in the day was talking shit about me, and Cog just started believing whatever the fuck it is. You know, I'm a pretty loyal guy. One thing I'll say about me, uh, in, uh, you know, say whatever you want. I'm a very loyal person. So uh, being friends with DJ Axel, you, you take a lot of shit for the shit that he does, right? The shit that he says. And I don't want to get into that crap. But, um, you know, uh, Hog didn't much care for the fact that I was making content with Axel and started calling me a pedophile and all this shit. Well, his own brother so calls that, him a pedophile. So. But yeah, that's the thing. Like, I mean, it's not a fucking joke. You know, Axel does does a bit, a very edgy bit. Cog's own family accuses him of molesting children. Yeah, I wouldn't suggest doing that as a bit either, honestly. Uh, I would, I've been told him that. I think it's like a, 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 a fucking difference in culture. I think in Norway, that sort of humor is a lot more common. That, that's That's my guess. That's yeah, my maybe. honest belief. I'm not sure what the Norwegians are on, but uh, my opinion, uh, not really a good thing to to joke around about. You know, we talked about well, Vito, who yeah. I like, uh, consider him a friend, but, you know, he made some jokes uh, on Twitter and you see him throwing his face every single day. And it's like, well, you know, I, yeah. I don't believe the things they say about Vito, but, um, you know, he shouldn't have said those things. It's a difficult uh, bit to lie. It. Yeah, it's yeah, a difficult it. bit to lie. I make those jokes about Brian Dunn, but that's only because people consider Brian Dunn subhuman, so no one cares what I say about him. I get literally no pushback for that because literally no one gives a fuck about Brian Dunn. If Brian Dunn was murdered, like, I'm pretty sure that would be a cold well, case. Now, well, you don't want to see any harm come to him, of course. We of course to... not. Of course not. Um no, no, I totally didn't send like expert assassin Toxic Angel out on like. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That I was so that. stupid. Yeah, that yeah. was just the dumbest shit. That was just the dumbest shit. Well, you, um, you did not plan ahead on Brian and his family. No, no, I don't have that kind of money. Fuck, you know. Yeah, yeah I didn't. <laughs> no. I didn't believe that. By the way, I just wanted to. I just want to clear that up. I didn't think that was true. Um, yeah, and you know, Brian Dunn himself has said a lot of wild shit. Uh, yeah, he was threatening to come kill me what two weeks ago, like, and now this is some sort of the uh, great violation of his rights that I've made this like shit post. Like, well, he's talked about come killing me uh, m multiple times. Uh, he's talked about going to kill others and all this shit, and you know, prepping Medicare's baby for, for ass rape and all this shit. Of course, Medicare doesn't have a baby, but um, still a uh, very bizarre comment. There's another, um, I don't have to look through my, my Twitter, but there's another one. Um, I think Dark Ninja had put me on that one. Let me see if I can find that. Uh, Brian Dunn's a sick individual. Uh, yeah, he is. Is the, is probably one of the worst people you'll meet on here. If, if we're just like all bullshit aside, the guy's really fucked up. The guy is a seriously fucked up dude. Yeah, and I'm I'm looking here. This is a this is what I was talking about uh, with what he said there. Um, he said, "Jim, you, you gonna make sure f you gonna make sure this is him speaking." By the way, your first child has a dildo too, right, man? Got to make sure the baby is prepped. Uh, is what he said to is what he said to Medicare. And that is yeah, his I've account, one hundred thousand percent confirmed. I, yeah. Yes, I've seen some other 
um, clips from that account. He said a lot of fucked up things. When he thinks no one's looking, he's a, he does all sorts of fucked up shit he wouldn't probably want to admit to. Like, um, the dude's just, like, warped. Like, he spends all his time online, and it, it's made him fucked in the head. It's made him sick. Uh, you know, and this is a guy who, who supposedly has a family, who supposedly, like, you know, on the holidays, he's not, he's not in the living room opening presents with the family. He's arguing with me. He's arguing with, with someone as irrelevant as me in some random Discord thread over some shit that happened three years ago that I don't fully remember. That's what the fuck he's doing on Christmas. Yeah, That's no. Not... He's just pathetic uh, in every way possible. Uh, and now he goes around to, all, you know, people who have completely disavowed him, shit on him, uh, and trying to get support, which uh, I, I think is pretty strange. Uh, he tried to say you were the new co-host, which was not accurate, obviously. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. and all this stuff, just, just straight out lies. Nothing new, nothing new. Absolute bullshit. What he means is that I'm opening up like a grifting page on my own thing. Like, no, I'm not. That's it's, he got that confused or someone's trolling him. He believes literally anything he's fucking told. Uh, and he's told a lot of shit. People fuck with the guy. People fuck with the guy a lot. Now, let me ask you something. Um, sure. Uh, what is your opinion on the state of Christianity in the West today? How, how do you see Christianity's influence? Do you think it's uh, becoming stronger or do you think it's rotting? Uh, I would say it's uh, definitely waning uh, in terms of influence. Um, I, I don't think that that's controversial. Less people are going to church, uh, less people believe in God than they did 20 years ago. Um they still have an influence, but uh, it, it, it's diminishing, I would say, day by day. Uh, do you feel that's uh, due to the fact that Christianity, as opposed to the other Abrahamic faiths, is often presented as, um, you know, uh, half-assed pacifism? Um, or, I don't know. I think it's a lot. Of, I think there's sorry. a lot of different reasons. Yeah, that's probably part of it. But um, and them not sticking to their teachings. Yeah. I think that's probably part of it. Um, you know, you've seen some of, um, you know, the, the new Pope's actions and some, some other people getting a little, um, I guess you could say weak when it comes to actual, you know, church doctrine, uh, and church teachings, uh, et cetera. But it's not just the Pope, but, uh, I, I would say that that, that is one of the reasons, but also just culturally, um, you know, I don't think they, they have the same influence, um, you know, with social media's in, uh, impact and just the way the culture is, uh, people uh, less and less uh, see church as like a cornerstone of their life. I'm and not saying that's good, by the way. I'm just saying that. The, no, I know. I do. Uh, what do you, you know. think that white culture specifically will will become when you know it's been completely secularized? Do you, Do you think that uh, because personally, my own belief is that. Once you remove religion from a culture, uh, that's immediately replaced with something um, poison, something that's going to be um, basically designed by Satan. So um, it's going to have pride. It's going to have uh, vanity. It's going to have, uh, you know, hyper consumerism, all this shit. Uh, I think that if, um, you know, if church was still something people were expected to do, if people were still expected to have at least some, you know, bedrock of morality in their lives. Not that you should all be saints, not that you should all uh, be like constantly at church, but if people had some like source of authority in their lives telling them, hey, you know, um, it, moderation, uh, you know, compassion, um, you know, uh, think about what happened the last time, just something like that instead of a never-ending uh, barrage of fucking, you know, information that's just basically a never-ending commercial. Yeah, um, you're right about the expectation thing. Um, uh, you know, it used to be expected that you would go to church uh, on Sunday, at least every once in a while, uh, show your face and, and have some kind of uh, grounding in that area or, um, you know, have that be a part of your life, and now it's... It's it's kind of gone by the wayside. Although in Mexico, the church is a little bit stronger uh, here, um, but even here, it's 
weakened a little bit. Here's Mr. Man for 10. Hold on. This one's for the California captain. <laughs> shaggy. 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 Thank you. Shaggy, shaggy, shaggy. Uh, there we go. And I'll add that to the tally. Um, yeah, right. I see this is a more serious discussion, but uh, and we'll come right back to it. But I see Surfer in the chat said you he, he wouldn't call in. You had to defeat Warhammer. Uh, first, I don't I'm not know. Not babysitting that retard. That guy's a pedophile, a confessed pedophile. He's also bad content. He will kill the show. If you let that man on here, he will make incredibly annoying noises and uh, it, it will be bad. It was literally, it's literally considered to be Godwinson's worst show. Uh, yet, no, I will not talk to that dude. The other question is Do you believe that uh, polygamy is necessary to, for the survival of the white race? Personally, I think that, uh, you know, God designed different peoples in different ways, uh, different gifts, different peoples. It seems to me that, that white people um, are not only biologically designed to be happier in polygamous communities, but that um, without polygamy, we do not produce enough children. It seems. Well, I, I don't know that you have to be polygamous um, to, to do that. Um, that would certainly be one way to perhaps, uh, you know, increase the, the white, to increase the white birth rate. Um, I don't, um, know that polygamy is like widely accepted though, uh, among most people. So I, I think it'd be hard to just say, well, polygamy. Angus, is in, stop uh, that. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's fine. I, I just don't know that polygamy is like most people would say no to polygamy. Well, I mean, I think that's largely because they've been programmed to see it as something abnormal, like homosexuality. But we'll be honest, if you could have two wives who got along very well and were both like committed to you, or ideally three is is, is the golden standard. I was going to say, I've heard stories of people having two wives that they thought were committed to them, uh, but they weren't simultaneous. Uh, you know, they were consecutive. But anyway, go the, ahead. The problem with it, is polygamy does not work outside of polygamous communities. Um, if there's some sort of, if there, if people, um, if the women do not feel comfortable, if they feel abnormal or like they're in some sort of weird sex cult, it will fall apart. Like it would have to be embraced on a societal scale, which is, you know, a, a serious problem. Um, I think that if the white race goes extinct, it will be largely due to our uh, reluctance or inability to embrace polygamy as God's law. But I mean, I, I think any, any white man, if he asks himself, would I prefer one woman or two or even three? I mean, the answer is pretty clear. Revenge AJ right, sent $1. Let this zero, zero on rumble. Good content. Thank you, Revan. Sorry, had to go for a while due to explosive diarrhea. No, that's fine. Seriously. Blue whale sized crap. Anyway, have you all noticed society tilted woke around 2011 to 2013? Yeah. Even Bible translation updated. I have noticed that. And then a little 2014 uh, reaction to that. Uh, yeah, I was a part of that. Uh, he says, Have you all noticed society tilted woke around 2011 to 2013? Even Bible translation updated. Have you noticed that, Shaggy? The um, can you repeat that last part? That um, have you all noticed that society tilted woke around 2011 through 2013, even Bible translation updated? Yes, I did notice that. I, I did notice that indeed. Um, that's um, I would have um, never believed. I would have never believed when I was watching uh, back in the day where Tonka saw was a thing, right? Um, I, I never would have believed that trannies. Like you would have to fucking respect their bullshit, or you'd get fired. I never would have imagined that it would get this bad. This, this fucked. It's like, I mean, it's dystopian. I live in I live in the San Francisco area. You have no idea how bad it is. It is horrible, Ralph. It is. It is fucking horrible. Um, honestly, uh. The, the vax laws, that was horrific. I never got vaccinated. I, I, I've i never been, and I, and I won't. I rely on the protection of Christ himself. Yeah, I didn't either. Um, and, you know, I know I'm going to get shit for this, but it's not against the word of wisdom that's tobacco. I can have all of this that I want. That doesn't look like a tobacco, babe. Mm -mm. I don't smoke tobacco. 
Just weed. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, <laughs> I used to smoke a bit of weed myself. Uh, now I just smoke tobacco. Is tobacco verboten? Yeah, and, and here's the interesting thing. Um, Joseph Smith t predicted tobacco uh, was bad for you back when they were using it as a cure for tuberculosis. He also predicted that we'd later find out that there's something bad about coffee that we don't know yet. I love coffee. Yeah, I used to as well. But the thing about the tobacco scared me. Like, there's legitimate reasons uh, to believe that Joseph Smith was a prophet of God. He predicted a lot of, of, of shit. Um, also, you know, if you're into Old West history, just one of the most fascinating characters in the Old West. You know, his best friend was literally the deadliest gunslinger in the Old West, Orrin Porter Rockwell. I did not know that, no. Yeah, that guy was uh, known as the uh, Avenging Angel. Uh, he uh, killed more people than any other gunslinger. I think he had a kill count of like 214, and Wyatt Earp even admitted that he was scared of him. Um, like, uh, the guy never cut his hair. There's a picture of him uh, that you can find, uh, um, you know. Aren't there some allegations that he may have like fabricated uh, some of that stuff though? Um, I I'm trying to refresh my memory here, but uh, I'll have to look it up. Are you thinking of John D. Lee, the guy who said, I don't believe that everything taught in that temple is true before he died? No, I'm just thinking of people who don't believe that he was an actual prophet, that he just kind of made that up. No, uh, no um, Orrin Porter Rockwell definitely believed. He believed himself to be a Nazarite. He believed that he was like Samson, which is why he never cut his hair. No, I mean, and the, he was the people who didn't believe people. what Joseph Smith was saying. Uh, There's the, no the one who's were... ever questioned, no one in the faith ever questioned that, other than John C. No, 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 I'm talking about people outside the faith. I'm not talking about people within. Oh, yeah. um, well, interestingly, uh, there's some people outside the faith, including a Catholic priest who swore that Joseph Smith could raise the dead and heal the sick and the wounded and perform other miracles. But they claim he did it by the power of Satan. In fact, one of Joseph's ex-wives, even though she left the faith, testified that, uh, yeah, he raised the dead, but uh, she claimed it was Satan. Uh, John C. Bennett, who was kicked out of the church for preaching that it was okay to have sex with hookers so long as he blessed them first uh he claimed that he was destined to kill joseph smith and when that didn't happen uh he got really pissed and tried to join a bunch of other mormon factions but they all kicked him out but so his, his teaching on hookers is pretty cool uh <laughs> that could um but um <laughs> i mean i need some excuse for my lifestyle right and he did, he, he did breed the Plymouth rock fowl, which is the most widely eaten chicken today. I do love chicken. Pollo. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty tasty. It's a pretty yeah. tasty bird. I'm kind of like Chappelle. If, if chicken ever came to me and asked for their, for my support or, you know, public endorsement, uh, I would, I'd be happy to do ads for chicken. Yeah. I love chicken. I really love it. All we got around here is a fucking KFC. It, it's sad as fuck. I mean, I would kill for an Arby's or a Sonic or something decent. But uh, no, no, we just got fucking Wendy's. The best thing we have is is a fucking a and w. Wendy's just it's came to Merida, actually, here in Mexico. Wendy's ain't shit. Wendy's I ain't like shit. Wendy's. They're good, but, I mean, the chili's gone to hell. And I can't, I can't forgive yeah. them for that. The chili used to be like, you remember the chili. The chili was really, really fucking good. And now it's basically the same shit you get at 7-Eleven. And I, it hurts to say that. It hurts to say that, but it is. It's the same shit you get at 7-Eleven. And you can compare them. And, and I, I swear to God, the nacho chili will taste slightly better. Now, how did you get into Mormonism? You weren't, did, were you born Mormon? Oh, look, okay. My mother was a devout, is a devout Wiccan. Uh, Wicca is a terrible religion of absolute heathen Witch. bullshit. Yeah, it's bad. It is bad. I've got a bunch of really fucked up books and tarot cards and crystals and shit. And all of it is like basically hating men under the guise of fucking, uh, you know, um, religion but it's not really it's just it's just a feminism with a bunch of mysticism there was this movie my mom fucking watched i think it was called uh 
Practical Magic or something, but she had all these feminist movies, and it was just like the most poisonous shit, just the most poisonous shit, right? So I, I as I'm growing up, I as like around 14, I realized this, you know, this Wicca stuff is for pansies, but you know, that's my heritage. That's for the religion I've been raised with, and it's sort of what makes me like kind of different. And I like that. So I look at if there's any alternatives. I find, uh, I find like, um, you know. Uh, a a Asatru, which is also bullshit, which is, uh, you know, um, I don't know that one. Oh, he cut out. Are right, you back? You're back. Go ahead. I don't know that one. Yeah. I know. What so Asatru is, is basically what Varg Vakern is, is into. And okay. it's, uh, it's, it's uh -huh. largely just associated with like black metal and shit. Right. Yeah. Okay. I know. him. But, yeah. but before that, it was like much more, uh, just obscure. But how and, did you get into uh, Mormonism, though? After I, okay, so um, eventually I just decided all of this crap was bullshit, because it is, right? And I'm, I have a really bad day where my girlfriend dumps me, and uh, I lose my job. And my car is fucking not working. And, like, everything's really fucked. And I realize that I have to pray to something, but... You know, all that childish crap that my mom's into is not going to help you when your life falls apart. Um, that's that's it's all just LARPy bullshit. And it's it's not it's not what a man uh, relies on when he needs to talk to God. So I think, OK, when you really need to talk to God, when you really need God's help and it's not bullshit, you need something to respond. What do you pray to? And I just say a Bible, get, get a fucking Bible. That's what everyone uses. That's like, that's what like people a lot smarter than you have been using for a long fucking time. Go read the Bible. So I go and I read the Bible and I start reading the Bible and I start praying and I start like, I don't know how to describe it, but there's this like overwhelming feeling that uh, we call the Holy Spirit. It basically makes you cry, even if you really don't want to cry. And it, it's something that can make a grown man cry and yet not feel like a bitch. It's like, it, it's not like bitch tears. It's like, it's, it's like tears of faith, right? And um, so I feel, okay, so this is something I've never felt with any of that retarded pagan idol worship. This has got to be something, this got to be like the presence of God or something. So I started apologizing for all the bad shit I've done and begging God to send me for like uh to tell me what to do with my life. And I ask God, uh, I start praying about all sorts of shit. And among that, I ask, what church should I join, right? So the next day, just literally the next day, uh, some Mormon missionaries knock on my door. So I talk to them and I listen to them. And, I'm, and I go, and after after they give me a very, honestly, a, a very milk toast and not convincing introduction to the faith, I go and I pray about it and ask, okay, so what should I do? Uh, and, uh, I, I look on on my my Bible, and as I'm turning it over, I see it's actually a Bible from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. So I took that as a sign from God, and I joined the Mormon faith. All right. Um, how was your? When was that? First off, uh, ten years ago. I was 24 when I joined the Latter Day Saints. So how was your? How does one join the Latter Day Saints? You sign your soul away to the church. Literally. Like on a piece of paper? Yes. So you did that, but I heard you talking about perhaps leaving the Latter-day Saints and joining an, an offshoot of Mormonism. Yeah, but there are none that are any good. I, I, I sometimes get upset with my church leadership. Uh, I have very strong ideas about God, and sometimes they'll say stuff I don't like, and I get pissed. But okay, so I, you I, you're not I, actually going to leave. Okay. Well, no, I love I, I I love my religion way too much to ever not be a Mormon. I and the other options of Mormonism are all shitty ones. Um, I, I it's 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 um there's a reason people have a hard time leaving this faith. Um, it's literally the world's best religion. I I would recommend you like you you uh see if it works for you. Um. You know, there are Mormons in Mexico. 
Wouldn't it be um, better if you could have just slapped Pantsu in faith and say, listen, I don't know anything about those people. I don't bring I don't know anything about those people. Right. I don't know understood. Who those people. I don't know who those people are. I don't know who you're referencing. So just understood. Understood. I got I got that. Got it. Got it. I don't know got who it. the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, I, I see the stop and sign there. Don't ever ever again. Right. Yes. Yes. My bad. Did not know that. Will not again. Yeah. Anyway, continue. But yeah, it would be better if men could have multiple wives. Now, wh why do you say that? I just think that uh, obvious problems would not be there if women could just fucking get along, and if their expectations were properly calibrated, that 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 would work very well. Look at Islamic society. Look at um, you know M Mormon fundamentalist communities when their prophets aren't you know fucking up, uh, but um, it tends to work. It, it tends to work very well for those who use that system, unless they engage in uh, you know snap fraud. That tends to go badly. Um, but um, I would say looking at Islamic society, it, it's proof that women are happier, live longer lives, and generally enjoy more peaceful relationships in polygamous societies. Okay. Um, now, I mentioned Mexico, and um, you see the third rail there. Don't do that again. Um, but you know what the third rail is, don't you? Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I okay. won't. I did, right. I did. That okay. was a mistake. That's that was fine. wrong. No, it's okay. I just, I, yeah. just, I just wanted to reiterate. Uh, but um, some Mormons moved to Mexico to basically – be more Mormon, I guess, or practice their polygamy. Mm -hmm. Mexicans don't really care. Um, and so I think there's still some Mormons here. I know Mitt Romney's family lived here for a certain period of time. I think his, his father, his grandfather, but uh, I think there's still a Mormon presence in Mexico, um, although I haven't read up on it in a while. Um, have you ever, you can't legally practice polygamy in the United States. That's a, that's a problem. Yeah, um, that that is a problem. There's ways around that. I mean, there's marriage in the eyes of God, and there's marriage in the eyes of the law, right? Like, for example, um, you know, if you have the priesthood, if you have all your endowments, you can perform your own wedding to a woman without any government interference. That's just between you and God, right? And technically, that's a wife. Um, now, a lot of Mormon communities that you're talking about practice snap fraud. Uh, it's a problem, but they do it to, you know, get food for the poor members of their community because they often end up with a lot of uh, wealth disparity. It, it's another issue there. But, um, uh, yeah, I don't think that uh, Mormons caving on the issue of polygamy simply because it's, you know, there's pressure from the government or because it's no longer as profitable is uh, proper doctrine. You know, Brigham Young taught that polygamy was, uh, was God's uh, intention for the white race. And they've tried to erase a lot of Brigham Young and his teachings from the church, specifically the Adam God doctrine, the belief that, you know, Adam was God and the God in Eden was God's creator. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, beliefs like that that are uh, only taught, uh, these truths are only taught within uh, the Latter-day Saints Church, and only then, only in the true fundamentalist doctrine, as it was before uh, Eliza Snow started, like, burying all that so that they wouldn't be... Uh, well, yeah, that's well, what I was going to ask you, because that's not official church policy. Um, that's so, supposedly, like... You know, by, gone by the wayside. You're not supposed to do that anymore. Uh, at least that's how they say it in public. I don't know what some do in private, but um, they kind of so, drop that. So the Latter-day Saints Church is actually Deseret Industries. Okay, so say you like soda pop. Say you like. Um, you, I don't you drink like it soda. anymore because I lost a bunch of weight. But yeah, I like Coca-Cola. All right, it's Coca-Cola. Mexico, they're better. But yeah, go ahead. Now, now um, say that Coca-Cola, you know, goes out of business, but there's another brand of soda that tastes even better than Coca-Cola. Who cares what it is, right? You're going to buy that, right? Yeah, I mean, if I like something better, I'll start drinking that. Yeah. 
exactly you don't have any love for the brand of coca-cola you're not in love with the people i mean the brand's it, pretty right? cool the, the logo and all that um, yeah i've read yeah. into some studies uh, about coca-cola actually and the the red coloring on the bottle um gives people the illusion that they're tasting something red like it's like uh it's, it's there is a lot of subconscious stuff there although you're not yeah. but um i'll be honest yeah. with you i'm a little susceptible to it myself yeah, yeah. But, um, um i just like the way coke tastes but i don't drink it very rarely if ever now like every six months or so because i just stopped all soda um so here's how I see it, right? And this is probably not the way all Mormons see it, but a great deal of them see it this way. The Latter-day Saints Church is the company that makes our Bibles and our Books of Mormon and the meeting houses we go to. And the prophet of the Latter-day Saints Church is God's chosen prophet of the Latter-day Saints Church. These people are not on par with Joseph Smith or Brigham Young, who were prophets for all humanity. The prophet of the Latter-day Saints Church is the man that was chosen by God to lead Deseret Industries, which is the company, the actual company, that um, runs the Latter-day Saints Church, manages its affairs, and makes all sorts of shit, and sells all sorts of shit. Ancestry.com. The Latter-day Saints Church is involved in much business. They've built malls. They've, uh, you know, invested in casinos and corporations, all sorts of things. It's um, It's got $37 billion, and that's not all from tithing. Uh, they, uh, you know, so I'm glad that, the, that there is a company, a $37 billion company, making sure that as a Mormon, I can practice some version of my religion. I don't like new Mormonism. I don't like the current flavor. I like, you know, classic Mormonism. I like the classic flavor of Mormonism, where they taught, you know, a doctrine that I actually think is more honest, uh, or at least more accurate in regards to what's probably going on here. I, I do think humans were created by aliens. Uh, that's, I don't want to get yeah, into that. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the whole planet thing, and the, do you get your own planet? Okay. And, uh... Stuff All right, like that. So I, that is a little I, hard to believe, but what I think we was actually saying is that uh, maybe humans are like the consciousness of the various planets that spend a bit of time on Earth before returning to their celestial form. Because if you really read into the words like Adam and Eve or Adam and evol evolution, shit like that, it starts making a lot more sense. If you start reading it as like science through poetry. Uh, Brigham Young was an incredibly brilliant man. He made Mark Twain look like an idiot. Like he had a conversation with Mark Twain and trolled the hell out of him. Um, it, it, the, and Mark Twain even wrote about this. Like uh, this guy was like a, a literal genius. Like uh, in, in pretty much every, any science you could name. Um, you know, he, he was also the like probably yeah. the second greatest prophet in history behind joseph smith of course yeah but who was he who was the first oh joseph smith would have been the greatest prophet in history oh he would have been the greatest oh i thought you th were thinking of muhammad that was the greatest yeah. muhammad was pretty cool in my opinion i read the quran or the baghdad quran it's a really cool book it's just page after page of like hellfire and people getting tortured and uh i mean it's basically a, a book of war it's it's nothing but threats of hellfire and accounts of the people he killed and um you know instructions for his dinner guests not to annoy him there's so where does jesus chapter. where does jesus fall on that and he was also he he had cats too muhammad had cats as well yeah he hated dogs he hated dogs uh and he had a muhammad, story there's a story in there about he you know, he didn't disturb his cat his cat was sleeping on his robes that he needed to to have to do his ceremony or whatever um and he just left his his cat there sleeping on his robes i forgot the name of the cat i used to know that but yeah he was a cat lover yeah yeah i mean um i, I personally i think muhammad was pretty cool um just because i'm into religion and i i find uh, the story of people who um are considered uh what's the word for it people who use religion to accomplish something great uh, I find that very inspiring. 
So even though oh. I'm not a Muslim, I think uh, it, to me the story of Muhammad as a person is pretty inspiring. Now, where does Jesus fall in the rankings as far as top prophets? Uh, Jesus is uh, a deity. Um, Jesus is Yehovah. Yeah, but he was a human. Uh, okay, so you're putting him in a separate class. Okay, that's fair. Oh, that's yeah, he's far beyond. That's fair. He's okay. Far, All far right, beyond Joseph that. Smith. Joseph okay, Smith, even that. in ascendancy, is less than Christ. Uh, Christ is the God of the gods. Like, even the angels are, are subservient to him. So, um, okay. All right, that's fair. You're putting him outside. Hey, uh, do you think like what do you how, how what's your opinion on the Mormon belief that there is a heavenly mother or uh, that God has a wife? Um, uh, you know, I've traditionally been fairly critical of, of Mormon Mormonism, mostly just for fun, though I don't have any particular problem with it. But uh, I don't know. I guess you could claim Adam Green's been on here. You could claim any religion's fantastical, but. Uh, the whole space thing and 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 stuff like that. There's this cartoon that we watched this one time. I don't think I have it. I right love it. A lot of Mormons hate that, but I, I it's it, the Latter Day Saints Church doesn't like. But I love that. That I cartoon. That. You know exactly which one I'm talking about, don't you? Uh, yeah. No, I watch that all the time. I share that to all my friends. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, but I don't have anything personally against Mormons or anything like that. Mostly just for just for fun. Uh, Mormons where I came from were kind of, you know, I was raised Baptist, uh, went to Catholic school, uh, funnily enough, because uh, it was the better elementary school there. And uh, my grandparents sent me to St. Michael's Catholic school there uh, in West Memphis, Arkansas. So I was a uh, Baptist uh, baptized when I was seven and um, went to Catholic school. So I kind of have some background in both those. Mormons were kind of seen as I, sh I mean, I'm not trying to be mean or anything. I'm no, no, go ahead. I, kind of like I, comic I, relief, basically, you know. Uh, like, oh, this Mormon's like, what are they talking about? And they got 18 wives, and, you know, they're talking about I wish. they got their that own would planet. Be, that would stuff. be ideal. Yeah. That would be ideal. Um, and um, the magic glasses and all this stuff. It was kind of seen as like. Um, well, you have to have a gift to use those. Otherwise, it's just a rock. Okay. Yeah, see, I don't even know all the all the exact background there but uh yeah i remember my dad used to just make jokes about mormons that's like fine that. no that that's fine that's most people's i used to make jokes about mormons before i actually investigated it um is but if you start looking into the prediction joseph smith made it's uh it gets pretty like almost kind of creepy he is very accurate very accurate in his predictions for a uh, civil war um I forget because he worded it in this prophetic way using examples, but he predicted the Civil War, how it would end, Lincoln getting shot, all of that. Um, yeah. and he said that he could avoid it if he was elected president. You know, he was not just the first uh, of God's prophets to be assassinated with a gun. He was also the uh, first candidate for uh, presidency of the United States to be assassinated while running for office. Now, what about the... Um... What happened at the uh, Mountain Meadows there? Oh, that one, yeah. Uh, so uh, a bunch of Pinkertons, you're probably familiar with them from yes. Red Dead Redemption. So they got a bunch of prostitutes and picked up a bunch of orphans, right? And they were moving guns, like a wagon train full of fucking guns and uh, weaponry uh, up into Mormon territory where they were going to make a, a um, what do they call it, a Potemkin village, right? A fake village and essentially set up a military outpost. Now, at the time, you know, the Mormons were not really wanting to join the United States. Brigham Young was a, a supporter of the Confederacy before that had fallen, so he wasn't very really happy with a bunch of uh, these guys coming in and taking his land that, you know, they'd been, they, they didn't live there by choice. They'd been chased up there. They'd been chased out of everywhere, uh, and finally they found Utah, right? So they they... they through literal miracles, they managed to make corn grow in soil that was thought to be unusable. And and so the Pinkertons show up with a bunch of orphans, right? And this guy, John D. Lee, who's like a, basically a hero sort of figure, right? He figures out what they're doing. So he rides his, his uh, mule uh, past the wagon train, like just says hello to them. And he looks at them and he notices like certain things about them. He p quickly figures out that, okay, so the women are whores. 
these kids look starved and uh, they're not really being cared for. And the men have like a lot of guns like a lot of guns and are clearly experienced killers just by the look of them so he rides back and he gets his his, his cavalry and they ambush them now uh the the gunslingers like immediately like start firing back but they get picked off because uh you know these frontiersmen are, are simply outclass the pinkertons but the prostitutes actually put up more of a fight uh, and uh, many of them use the children as human shields. When they start using the hum children of, as, as shields, um, John D. Lee famously yelled, Mormons, do your duty, at which point he drew his saber and charged the gunfire and started stabbing the whores to death, as the other Mormons likewise charged in either on foot or on cavalry and cut down the prostitutes with their blades. They then took the orphans um, and, uh, you know, rescued them. Uh, that caused uh, something called the Mormon War, where the Mormons were basically overrun by the U.S. and forced to join the United States at gunpoint. Now, I'm looking through the article here. I, I admit this is not my, um, I don't know everything about this subject, but I'd heard about it before. I'm not seeing anything about Pinkertons. Um, they're, they're describing yeah. it as, um, you know, they were fearful that these were anti-Mormon people, uh, and it was kind of like, hysteria there uh and they joined up with some indians to try to make it look like an indian attack and then once people saw that it was mormons and indians mostly mormons um well, that wait, wait wait that they were allowed into the camp they won the battle right but uh they were worried that some people had seen you know who they were etc and there was a white flag raised according to this record here uh there was a white flag raised and they were allowed into the camp right uh, of immigrants and that they murdered all the immigrants uh that were that's older than the, 17 years old yeah that's not true they um the the there were indians um among the danites which was basically the mormon police force uh there there were many Ute indians who had been baptized into the faith um you know um but uh, no, that's that's otherwise untrue. They're um, they're they were Pinkertons and whores using children as human shields. So where does the Pinkerton thing come in? Because I'm just not. Uh, of course, I'm the just Pinkertons looking at this one. Were, recently. Um, the Pinkertons were. I know not what the Pinkertons were, and I knew them before Red Dead Redemption. Uh, yeah, no, they weren't friends to the Mormons. They definitely weren't friends of Brigham Young. Uh, they uh, had well, they he tried was the to territorial assass governor at the time. Uh, Brigham Young, by the way, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he they tried to assassinate him on a few occasions. He was the prophet of the church. Yeah, I know. I, I'm aware of Brigham Young, uh, but he was yeah. already the territorial governor of Utah uh, at this time. Yeah, he was friends with Abraham Lincoln. Uh, he he personally made friends with Abraham Lincoln, despite the fact that he'd been a, and was a Confederate sympathizer. Uh, but where, because I'm looking through, at least on Google, and again, you know, it's Google, whatever, but I don't see anything yeah. about the Pinkerton allegation. So, well, I mean, that's not something the United States government is going to admit. I mean, it, it, it is also something the Latter day Saints Church doesn't really want to admit. They would prefer to just say, yeah, okay. Well, here's the thing. John D. Lee was actually turned over to the United States government and executed. That's correct. Because Brigham Young wouldn't protect him. And that's why he said right before they shot him, you know what, I don't really believe everything they're teaching in that temple. And that is why there are breakoff groups of Mormon fundamentalists who say that, that at that moment, Brigham Young sort of lost favor with God for sacrificing his son to a corrupt government when John D. Lee was, in fact, a hero. Well, um, I don't know. I'm just not seeing anything about the Pinkerton Thing. Yeah, if, if it happened that. the way they said it happened here in this account, I wouldn't call that heroic. Uh, but I, again, if that's an incorrect yeah. account, I don't I know. Mean, I wasn't there, obviously. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. I, this is something I've read in in a book. Um, you know, I is by by. I'm not going to get into obscure. Uh, hold on, I might be getting swatted. I don't know who this is. I'll tell them to go away if it's not cops. Okay, go ahead. Possible swatting here live on the kill stream. Uh, powerchat.live slash the Ralph Retour if you want to send in a super chat question. Um, Rumble Rants as well. Uh, we'll see if he's getting swatted. I thought he was on a boat. I guess they could still, still do that. 
Um, yeah, I'm an internet person. Oh, he did get swallowed. Sorry, man. Yeah, don't, don't uh, we never order pizza. Thank you. Yeah, no, pizzas. We just oh, tell just them, pizzas. like, okay. yeah, I just tell them, look, buddy, uh, w my dad's British. We we will never order pizza. He's British and diabetic. Don't ever send pizza to this house. In fact, don't send anything to this house. Take us off the list. That's not how my dad does things. I don't even live here, so. Um. Okay. Oh, you're somewhere else. I was supposed to say, I, know, I don't care. About um, or how huh? they did the pizza thing on the boat, but they got another address. No, they can't find the boat. I just moved the boat. I've got footage yeah. to upload today from moving the boat. They don't know where the boat is. Okay. Um. Uh, all right. So, back to the John D. Lee thing, and you didn't order those pizzas. Um. No. Go ahead. Continue. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, uh, John D. Lee was executed and, um, you know, the, um, yeah, he was. To, the, to this day, uh, people will point to that as the moment there was corruption in the church. Um, cause you know, I, no, you're not going to find that account. That's the Mormon fundamentalist account of John D. Lee. You're not going to find that on Google. <laughs> You're not going to find that in the uh, books written by the Latter-day Saints Church. That's something that you'd ha you, you'll you find in books written by like people like Ogden Kraut and others. Like That is a, um, you know, that's the account of people who actually lived through it. That is the account that was handed down from people who were there. And they say that John D. Lee was a hero. And they certainly wouldn't have gone against Brigham Young about that unless it was true. Now, well, again, I I, I don't know. I'm just, yeah. it's not my, I haven't done a lot of scholarship on it. I, I'd heard about it before, but I saw it mentioned in chat. And so um, that's why I. That's why I brought it up. Somebody had mentioned it in chat. So. Yeah, no, I, I, I can explain Mountain Meadows. People ask about that one all the time. Um, now, have you count uh, encountered any um uh, i guess you, you're pretty headstrong seemingly um have you encountered any resistance to your own thoughts your own feelings within lds or when you go to church and, and stuff like that yeah i've gotten into arguments with some people uh you know there's some people who um you know, I just didn't see eye to eye with about certain things. Uh, there's certain people I didn't like for reasons entirely unrelated to doctrine. I've got some great friends in the Latter-day Saints Church, some people I really love in the Latter-day Saints Church. And there's some people in the Latter-day Saints Church I personally don't much care for, but I'm sure Christ loves them, and I'm glad they uh, have the gospel in their lives. Um, you know... Given that, you know, I have a more interpretive view of the doctrine, I guess I'd say, uh, a lot of people who might be more inclined towards uh, scriptural inerrancy probably aren't going to get along with me, or they're not going to ha have the same take on the Bible. Um, you know, I see scripture as, you know, something... Uh, that's uh, almost something to be had fun with. A lot of people don't treat it that way. A lot of people don't uh, think that asking questions about stuff that would probably be considered non sequitur is a uh, worthwhile expenditure of time. But, you know, I, I like heresies, apocrypha, stuff like that. If you're into religion to the degree that I am, uh, it's basically just being a nerd about theology. Um, and I, uh, I see this guy mentioned. Um, I know this guy already, and I, I was thinking about him. Now he's mentioned by enemy or something in chat, but I actually was going to bring him up anyway. Um, the Warren Jeffs guy. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts on him? I think he would kind of... Um, yeah, so he he led the fundamentalist church of of LDS or Church of Jesus Christ. I know it is. Yeah, 
Um, so he's serving life in prison, but um, yeah. what are your thoughts on his conduct? I think that that was God's way of showing Latter-day Saints that um, the prophet, the position of prophet isn't to be passed from father to son because there's a reason that happened. In other Mormon communities, you have to prove that you're worthy of being the prophet. You're going to be at least 60 years old by the time you become the prophet. And you're going to have to have proven um, that you're someone that God actually chose to do great things. The current prophet is the world's leading heart surgeon. He was the world's leading heart surgeon before he was con even considered to be a prophet. And that's probably why he was made prophet. Um, Warren Jeffs was not. He was groomed to be prophet. He was chosen by his father to be prophet at a very young age. Uncle and Rulon. Was yeah, Rulon, um, you know, raised Jeff to be his successor. So he never even conceived of a world where there were consequences. Because he was Warren Jeffs, he was uh, he was the chosen prophet of God from from the time he was a child. Like we see what being like a celebrity uh, does to a kid. Imagine being like Moses, right? In a very small community, fine, but in the only world you really know, you're basically a god. So he lived in a world where there were no boundaries, where he decided what the boundaries were, and that made him evil. Um, that's why the prophet. That's why the position of prophet is chosen by God. It is not hereditary, and this is a, a condemnation of the RLDS because the RLDS traces its lineage to the son of Joseph Smith. Because they argued, that's why there is an RLDS, that, you know, the position of prophet is one that is hereditary. It is not, in fact, hereditary. Uh, and, the you know, Warren Jeffs is God's way of showing us that. Okay. Um, I, I just remember him from the news and stuff, and I'd actually had planned on bringing that up, but... Uh... I actually didn't know about his father. I was reading a little bit of that uh, on the side here. Um, I didn't know all of his background. Um, uh, to my knowledge, Rulon never did anything wrong. To my knowledge, so far as... as well, he was a polygamist. Um, that's not... Well, I'm, that's, not, I'm uh, just saying it's illegal. I I don't care, but um, it doesn't matter. Well, I just, I guess as far as I'm concerned, be a polygamist if you want to be, uh, right? Like, I, it doesn't... I don't well, care. I would but, just say that... Um, like, I, do you really feel that the white race can survive without polygamy? I don't. I, yeah, I mean, I think it could. Um, I mean, would polygamy boost the numbers? It, it was widely the numbers. adopted. Oh, dramatically, dramatically increases the numbers. Look at any white polygamous society. They have kids like rabbits, uh, like rabbits. Now, I want to make something clear. Polygamy is for men who can afford it. You shouldn't go taking buying cars you can't afford and putting it on credit. You shouldn't go taking wives you can't feed and promising them a future. I haven't taken no wives because I can barely afford to feed myself. There's a difference between practicing polygamy and approving of it. So I don't want to hear any shit about people giving me crap about not having any wives. There's a reason for that. You it won't hear from me. Yeah. yeah, it would be irresponsible. Yeah, you wouldn't hear from um, me. Uh, Probably a good call, if you ask me these days. Um, but um, do you aspire to? I mean, clearly you do. Uh, yes, if I if God life. would bless me with 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 the resources, I would gladly take multiple wives, and I have a lot of children. That would be um, that would be ideal. You know, the number of children you have by the number of women you have is actually a sign of God's favor. Allegedly. Um, now. <laughs> that is something Joseph Smith uh, actually taught. Now, um, yeah, I'm just saying. Uh, uh, there could be some a few downsides as well. But uh, anyway. Well, well, to that point, immense suffering is also a sign of God's favor. <laughs> well, I'm the holiest motherfucker around then. I yeah, guess. exactly, right? Uh, That's how I see it about myself. That's how I see it. <laughs> It's like, fuck, I go through hell. God must love me. 
Yeah, I must be the holy son of a bitch walking the earth then. I, I, I guess uh, holiest son of a bitch. I did enjoy your earth. sermon on spite. I did enjoy that. <laughs> you like that? I, I, that was off the top I of my showed head, that too. to some of my friends at church. I said, oh, he's a pastor. Trust me. Just listen. <laughs> he's yeah, a pastor. No, this is what some people listen to in church. <laughs> I just played it for them. They thought it was like a pastor. At like I a, forget what I this. called it now, though. It was spite, but it was, uh, was it benevolent spite? I can't remember what the term was I used. Um, but yeah, uh, spite. Oh, that a, was. That was epic. Yeah. That was fucking epic. That was uh, just off the top there. Uh, as is most of my, most of my stuff off the top um, of the head, so to speak. Now, um, I'm looking at their compound here, though the the fundamentalist uh, LDS. They got a pretty sweet compound down there in Texas. Maybe I mean, I'm... it looks pretty cool. Um, yeah. I mean. The problem, I, I, I don't want to join them because they don't let you use electronics. They've got weird rules, man. I don't want to get involved in that. Uh, oh, you can't use electronics or what? Well, they've got electronics, but they're very, like, tightly policed. Like, you're not just allowed to use them. Like, um, you have to have a reason. To, it's a cult, dude. <laughs> Like it's a tightly controlled cult. I'm not even sure they'd accept me. Uh, like um, they're like some groups of Mormons are like super fucking orthodox. They wouldn't want anything to do with me. Oh, like so, some of them are like the Amish. Oh, okay, yeah, it's just too much. Um, there's yeah, there's levels to this shit, man. And and you know, if you go far enough out there, there'd be monsters. Like it's like like the Labaronites who like if you if you you get pregnant, if you're a woman, you get pregnant and they don't like who you got pregnant by, they'll disembowel you to kill you wow. in a ritual. Like, yeah, and their founder did this to his own daughter. Their prophet disemboweled his own pregnant daughter. And then held up the fetus. It was horrible. Like these are the people who got into a war with the Mexican cartel until a bunch of them got blown up, and then they came down here. And yeah, it's not a good idea to do that. Um. Yeah, no, they they got into the war with the Sonola cartel. Those guys. Uh, I never heard of them. Never. I don't want to. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, oh yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, My yeah. bad. Yeah. Never heard yeah. of them. Um, um. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't suggest. Uh, it doesn't sound like a good idea. Um. To do something like that um, well, yeah i've heard stories not you know um but yeah mormon mexico is a good place for mormons so long as you don't do stupid shit um so long as you're a respectful person i hear mexico is a good place for christians like so long as you are a christian and want to live a christian lifestyle it's not a bad place to live i'm considering it um you know i don't uh I live in a boat. I could sail south. Uh, I'm, I'm honestly, I've considered sailing to Mexico. I have. Um, I'm, I mean, seriously considered it. Well, uh, and you know, I've I'm on the, I was just going to say, I'm on the, you could go to the uh, west coast of Mexico. I'm on the, I'm in the eastern part of the country. So you would have to go all the way around South America um, to get, to where I'm at. Um, oh, no, I was considering saying to California, Mexico. Mexico yeah, yeah, Baja California. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I've heard that it's like, so long as you're a respectful person, uh, you won't have any problem in Mexico. Yeah, um, you wouldn't have too many problems, uh, I wouldn't say, especially in the Yucatan, uh, no, you, you wouldn't. Um, and you got your papers in order and all that stuff. Um, yeah, I just won't take any injections of anything. I don't vaccinate for anything. I don't trust them. Yeah, I don't think that they... Mexico stayed sure. open the whole time during the um, pandemic, quote-unquote, uh, to visitors the whole entire time. They never shut their country. And they were having huge, like, million-people parties and shit in Mexico City. Uh, now, they yeah. did have a vaccine here, but um, they don't even, you know, they have a hard time collecting all their... Tax is much less making everybody take a vaccine. I, I Mexican mean, candy is hella good. I go, there's a Mexican grocery store near me. Uh, and I go there and get these that things of candy. And uh, it's better than the American uh, shit. Um, yeah, I love I love Mexico, Mexican food. Uh, mm. And their candies yeah. and their, their treats, etc. Yep. I don't know. Uh, authentic Mexican food. 
What is that? A torta? No, it's a burrito. Oh, okay. Um, I got the torta yesterday. I eat this place every day. It's called um, I forget what it's called, but it translates as No Regrets Grill. Really good, really good. Um. Yeah, there's a lot of authentic Mexican cuisine around me, as you could probably imagine. Um, yeah, no, I mean, everything you post with food and it looks really damn good. Yeah, really know, good. They know how to cook down here. Um, yeah, no, I, um, I, uh, the problem is with me is if I'm not, if I'm not smoking weed, I'm spending all my money on food. Like, um, I get a real fucking appetite when I'm not high. Like, now, um, What's stopping you from going to Mexico? Um, well, uh, today we almost drowned. The boat is not uh, fit. We tried to use the radar and sound systems, and it started screaming at us. Um, like so She needs serious fucking work. She's a racing boat from the 70s. She needs serious fucking work. Um, you know, I'm going to try and start, you know, uh, God damn it. Bella, shut up! dog um i'm gonna try and start uh grifting as as it's called these days so uh you know try and get some content going with the boat i think the boat could be made into some real yeah. good content i was thinking that same thing um yeah like you know that rv content fucking rv let's get a boat going let's get some really crazy people <laughs> on my boat and go sailing and abandon someone on an island. I think let's maroon baked Alaska. Let's maroon baked Alaska for how shit fucking power chat is. I still haven't figured it out. It's like, very easy uh, to sign up. I know. No, I'm just being like fucking. But um, it'll be. I, I've got to set up square, and we're good. But um, like uh, I do want to get like some. I want to get my dog to stop barking in the background. That shit's annoying as fuck. I want to get like some content where we get some like uh, IRL streaming on the boat. Because if we sail close enough to land, I can get enough of a fucking connection that we could live stream. Um, yeah, that's the only and, problem. The further out you get, you would need like Starlink or something like that. Well, the good uh, thing about the Bay Area, there's certain places, especially around Ryers Island, where you'll get a pretty good connection just because of the military base. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Both. Yeah, no, you get a great connection. Yeah, you, if people play Xbox out there. How many people could fit on the boat? About four would be, I'd be comfortable with. Four. Would they be comfortable? Like, like it depends. Like, you mean, like, uh, maybe uh, someone, like, by people, like, on a scale of, of me to PPP, or what are we talking here? Is <laughs> Like it's it's a it's a you mean like the weight and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to think how many people because it's actually a concern. It's 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 actually a concern. Um, probably I, mean, I was probably, I was thinking you know me and you and a couple hotties like you know that would work. Uh, that, that would work. work. That would work. Yeah, I was I was just like yeah, I was thinking like uh, how many people max capacity worst scenario, but uh, yeah, you and me and some girls that's no problem. Just that's going, no problem. Yeah, I think that that could work. Uh, oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, if you want to come out, we can definitely take the boat out. And shit, it's got all the facilities necessary. Um, and, um, like, if we go out far enough, we can, um, I don't know, like, shoot the revolver at, at uh, Ryers Island. Uh, I can't uh, touch guns, actually, officially. Um, so. Neither can I. Great. Oh, great. <laughs> We're like brothers. You were the same. Don't say things like that on air then if you can't. Uh, no, that's that's trying to get you in trouble. Um, uh, yeah, no, that, I would it's never. not where they could ever find uh, it anyway. But, um, like, uh, no worries. Shaggy plans ahead. Shaggy plans ahead. Um, but, like, um, no, Ryers Island is where I want to go because there's actually an abandoned, uh, like, uh, weed farm there. And there's still like a bunch of trailers and a barn. And you can see it on Google Maps, right? Because, all right, so there's uh, Port Chicago was a town where there was like a disaster and the military bulldozed the entire town and kicked everyone out. And now there's a military base there, which is why you get good, 
internet connection. But Ryers Island was just outside the town, just outside Port Chicago, and they had like a weed farm because it was the 60s, right? Yeah. But when the town became a military base, those people had to go. So all that stuff is just left there rotting. Um, the weed's probably not any good. No. Uh, oh, God, no, no, no. If you want weed, I'll just get, get us some really good weed. I, I like my best friend's like the biggest weed dealer in the area. <laughs> um like uh, we, I can get us whatever we want in that regard, pretty much. Nah, I've, given it up. I've, I've given it up. Uh, every time I go back to smoking weed, it's a short trip back to drinking, back to other things I don't need to do. So uh, unfortunately, I do. I do like that, but um, just not for me. I'm uh, working on the the abstinence train, uh, which I've fallen off of a couple times uh, it's all right above. it's all right to get off that train every now and then i i ride that uh, train see too. that's the mentality yeah i've had that mentality before but uh you know it's one day at a time like i've been saying uh, yeah no don't like, i'm actually this is horrible i'm actually professionally i'm an addictions counselor really yeah and if like you ever need to talk I, i'd be happy to help you in that regard because yeah you should Probably not be like me. I'm actually in full relapse right now. I'm absolutely fucking relapsed. Uh, but um, I, I, it is what it is. I so mean, wait, 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 wait. You're an addiction counselor? Yes. It's fucked up, huh? It's fucked. It's totally fucked up, right? I mean, a little bit. Um, kind of. I'm also a Mormon. I shouldn't be doing any of this. Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, drinking and, and, and smoking weed and stuff like that. That's against... Uh, the, the weed is fine. The weed is not against the word of wisdom, but the alcohol certainly is. I should not definitely. be drinking. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Um, but caffeine and stuff, too. I don't think that you're supposed to do that. But you said you don't. don't well, actually, that's hot. It's, oh, it's uh, just hot. Yeah, there's. It has to be uh, hot coffee specifically, it, it, or coffee at all. It, is supposedly there's something about it. Science hasn't discovered yet, but it's bad for you. Like uh, Joseph Smith didn't say caffeine. He clarified caffeine is fine. Avoid coffee. Like, and I see in chat, Jabroni Mark says, "Damn, Ralph, if only you could just stick to weed." Yeah, and I've done that before, but. I don't know. It's just something in my brain. If I if I permit myself any leeway, it's um I'm just that type of person where um before you know it, it'll be and it may not be the next day, it may not be the next week. It could be the next month or the next year or years down the line. Uh I've had this this conversation with myself many times. Yeah, oh yeah, just have a little have a little weed. Well guess what? Every single relapse I've had over the last year was I'll just have a little weed start off with before you know it, you're having a drink. Uh, you're having this and having that. So that's just my personality though. Yeah, no, I, um, I, I started with this, uh, I ended up with that. And after this, I'm going to get some E and J the drink. Yeah. Brandy. And I'm going to fuck another prostitute because I have money now and I'm pissing it all away on horse. Don't do that. I, I'm I, I'm trying to stop, but it's like I'm I'm gonna do it. I know I'm gonna do it. It's it's a problem. I've I've gone through a thousand two hundred dollars, and almost all of it was horse. Just eat and just eat and chill out and go to sleep. Yeah, yeah, I I, I feel you there. Uh, that's 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 the wise thing to do. Um, like I've got problems. I'll I'll admit. You know, as a counselor, I should be the first one to admit um, when I do relapse, it's pretty damn bad. But also kind of entertaining, at least, you know, if you're going to relapse, have fun, right? Yeah, plus the six grand is not going very far on whores if you're in the U.S. Um, it's 200 bucks uh, full service. How, how, how cheap is it? I don't, I, I don't have any personal insight that I could share that I would share. They're making uh, it, but go ahead. What's a what? What would what's a good vacation spot in Mexico? Um, well, Cancun, um, Cabo is probably closer to you. I mean, I know it is. Um, 
Uh, Mexico City itself, but I, if Mexico you're looking for City, beer, I was thinking, I was yeah. thinking Mexico City sounds CDMX, nice. Ciudad de Mexico. Um, I've been there several times. I like Mexico City a lot. My, yeah, when I my get last the trip Mexico. was a little. Uh, didn't have the ending there that I wanted, but uh, I still love Mexico City. Yeah, I mean, um, I've wanted to go back to Mexico for a while. I've been there a few times before, but never. Uh, oh, I was a kid then. Um, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I might uh, when I get the next two thousand, I might go down to Mexico City. Uh, yeah, you should. I was thinking Vegas, but I've been to Vegas before, and that shit's expensive as hell. Um. Yeah, I would say. Let's see. Hold on, I'm responding to this. Sorry, Shaggy. Okay, sorry, I was responding to this no, no text here, but um, yeah, Mexico City. You could live cheaply in Mexico. I I don't know what it is you do for work. Um, I'm an addictions counselor. Oh, you're doing that now. Yeah, that's I'm currently. Uh, yeah, I'm an I'm an addictions counselor. Yes. And this is what I'm currently doing. You don't show up to work drunk or high. Well, uh, I'm gonna out of the work for the next few months while I wait for the place I'm going to be working to open. I have the job, but they're not open yet. So uh, I'm trying to get into you know the whole um, doing a YouTube program uh, thing. You know, I, I look at it's like I, I look at Andy Worski and I'm just like, God damn it, if he can do it, I've got it can't be impossible. I I gotta be. I look at Cog and I'm like, fuck, this guy's a retard. This this I gotta be able to do this. You don't think that about me? Cog. No, no, no. I well, no, I didn't say you. I said Cog and. Um, well, I mean, this is what Worski. I do for a living. Do you think it's that easy? You could just do it. I think I could be Cog. I don't think I'll have the success that you do. No, no. Uh, as I said, you're like a folk legend. You are a living folk legend. I do not think I will ever achieve that status. I think I can be Cog. I think I can. I can I'm be. I'm not the sure you want that status, Shaggy. Yeah, it's not always correct. Well, know. I think I can take Cog's money. <laughs> this is what I think I can do. I think I can take Cog's money. It's not. As I think you in the seem. audience can help me take Cog's money. <laughs> Yeah, it's not as glamorous as it may seem. Uh, I don't know that it seems. No, that I, yeah. I look. I know what I'm in for. I mean, if it's successful, I'm gonna get more abuse than glory. I, I I've been told that, and uh, again, no, I'm not gonna get to the level of you or PPP. I don't think I'm a very humble person. Uh, I think I'm probably be at the level Cogs at, and I'd be happy with that. You know what? Fifty bucks for doing a stream, I'd be happy with that. Puerto, Shit, Puerto Vallarta was also mentioned. Um, yeah, it's a great place. I've never been there, though, but it's beautiful there. Puerto Vallarta, that's where I went. It is really nice. It oh, is really there? nice. Yeah, it is really nice. Um, just beautiful. Just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I went on a cruise there when I was a kid. Maybe you should come to Merida. I want to. I'd like to. I mean, it looks nice, and the food you post looks really good. Yeah, I live in the Yucatan. I, it's the safest place in Mexico, uh, by far. And Merida is one of the top safest uh, cities I, in the in the whole North American continent. Uh, yeah, no, I'd I'd love to come to Merida. I'd love to see what that's like. Um, well, get a ticket. Just yeah, I mean, shit. When I get my next payment, I I, I might. Like, Maybe you should uh, come on down. I got a place you can sleep. Fuck. Um, yeah, we could do some really good content. Let me fucking get on that. Like, uh, I'll, I'll fucking see if I can fucking, you know, make that work. Of course, I've, I'm currently watching my dad's uh, pets, and I got to make sure he's medically okay before I straight up leave, you know. Well, sure. Uh, but, yeah, other than that, like, yes, like, as soon as I can, definitely. We'll do some really cool content. Um, shit. Uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, it's really nice here. I gotta show you around. No, I, I think that would be fucking awesome. That would be really cool. Um, yeah. Would you go to a cenote? What is that? Um, 
Well, how could I explain? I guess I'll just use Wikipedia to explain. Um, I went to one on Monday. First one I'd been to, actually, and I lived here for a year and a half. Um, oh, wait, they're giving me the... Okay, let me see. They're giving me the... Oh, there we go. They try to give me the Spanish uh, cenote on Wikipedia first. Uh, it's a natural pit or sinkhole resulting when a collapse of limestone bedrock expo exposes groundwater. The term originated on the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, which is where I live, where the ancient Maya commonly used cenotes for water supplies and occasionally for sacrificial offerings. Uh, so they would yeah, I'd human, love to see that. They would do human sacrifices down there too. Um, Fuck yeah. A uh, name derives from a word used by lowland Yucatec Maya, which I can't say, but to refer to any location with accessible groundwater. Uh, Yucatecans have their own language. Um, about 30% of the population here speaks uh, Yucatec, um, which is its own language. Base. Dude, I'd love to see that. No, I, I, I'm fascinated by stuff like that, you know. Um, yeah, we could do some yeah. IRL streams. Yeah, that's true. We could... Dude, like, uh, we could see some of those ancient temples and shit. Yeah, I saw Chechen, Chechen Itza, really which is one of the um, wonders of the world, uh, actually. Uh, one of, what, two that I've seen, I think? I don't know. I have to look at the list. But um, I saw the Colosseum, too. Um, but, um, yeah, Chechen Itza is here. It's official wonder of the world. And then uh, Temple of the Magi or Pyramid of the Magician, which I mentioned pretty often, too, at, at Uxmal. is really nice, too, so. And there's a lot of other ones around here that I haven't seen yet. Yeah, no, I temples. I I'm, I'm into anything vaguely religious, and like the the religion of the the Aztecs and the Mayans and shit. That that is some pretty epic shit, man. The amount of of blood sacrifice is is it's pretty epic. Uh, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see those temples. Or, I mean. Shit, you can probably get some pretty good tours down there. Um, yeah, you can. I still got the guy's card who did my last tour, actually, and he was great. I filmed a video at uh, Chechen Itza. It's still on the other channel. I think it's on the other channel uh, on Rumble if you want to check it out. You have to go way back, though, to like June of last summer. But it, it is still up there. Uh, and he did a great job. Uh, I wouldn't mind going back. So, And there's, yeah. uh, there's cenotes all around. Uh, Chechen Itza as well, although they stay pretty packed, but, um, yeah, I got a, uh, like, um, shit. That's something I can raise some fucking money for is the, is that trip too. Like, I'm, I'm sure people will donate for that. I mean, fuck, but yes, we're definitely going to do that. I definitely want to do that. I have. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Maybe I can fucking like bring some books of Mormon down there and give them to the natives. See if they can convert you could do that but you might you want to make sure it's in spanish though um oh yeah no the church makes sure yeah. that they've got in every language yeah, possible. i'm sure they do yeah i'm sure they do. i'll tell them i'm going down there they'll give me a whole backpack full of them to give out yeah you could do that yeah um, yeah why not i'm not gonna make it like a religious mission or something i'll just like make sure to you know if the opportunity comes up give one out yeah, I'm down to do some IRL. I'm down to hand out some. Well, I mean, you'll be the one to hand them out, but um, to be with you while you're handing out the the Book of Mormon and stuff like that, uh, I think that would be good. Yeah. Now they're pretty strongly Catholic here. Um, yeah, it's really hard to get Catholics to change religions. I typically don't. If they're Catholic, I I, I just stop there because it's like that's a mountain to climb, man. Like. Catholics are usually pretty heavily invested in that. Well, they have like the coolest stuff too. So I really didn't want to admit that, but yeah, they really do. <laughs> sort of like, um, yeah, they have all these badass, you know, relics yeah. and awesome cathedrals and all this shit. There's a cathedral here yeah. in Merida that's like the oldest cathedral in on this side of the planet, actually, uh, in in North America for sure. It was like 15 something that was built. Um, so yeah, they're kind of cool like that. Uh, I could understand uh, having an attachment. Yeah, it's like we're not. It's it's really hard to sell to them. Yeah, but you never know. Till you try. Yeah. Give one out. Maybe they will. 
Yeah, you know, I, I, I always give uh, anyone who'll take a Book of Mormon. I mean, it's um, it really is a wonderful uh, book. It, uh, it it's not just helpful to uh, people uh, who are members of this church. It's uh, you know a testament of Christ before all the world. Everyone should read the Book of Mormon. What do you think about the play they made, the South Park guys? Um. <sighs> I watched it, but it's kind of dated now. Yeah, so it's been a while since I met it. Yeah, yeah it's kind of, yeah. I, uh, at the time, I can see it would have been really edgy and offensive, but it is just like, wow, shot at Christians, shot at Mormons. Yeah, I have not seen that before. I was more offended by Hell on Wheels. I've never actually seen the Book of Mormon, actually, uh, if you want to know the truth. But uh, I just know of it because it was a pretty big deal. I watched it, and it was like, I expected to be really offended. But there was like a Western show called Hell on Wheels that uh, portrayed Mormons in a very negative light. And I was much more offended by that because it was like more insidious, more like serious. It was The people who made that show genuinely hated us. Um, whereas the people who made the Book of Mormon just were making jokes. Like, I no, don't speaking, mind jokes. No, that's fine. But speaking of jokes, I, I've seen Brian Dunn on Twitter calling for your arrest. said it's imminent. Um, yeah, that's great. Uh, and the pizza. Yeah, it's probably. Um, I, I, don't, I don't give a shit about that. Um, fuck off, Brian. Unless you gargle the officer's balls, no one's going to arrest me. Or if they do, I've been in jail before. I don't give a fuck about jail. You better be prepared for the fucking consequences when I get out, bitch, because I ain't no, fucking wait. funny. You wouldn't but, want to go to uh, Mexican jail, though. So I'll just give you, oh, a, God, little, no. I'll give no, you a little no. warning there. Um, uh, you probably want to be on good behavior in Mexico. Uh, absolutely the best behavior. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm not going to fuck around in a foreign country where I don't speak the language. Shaggy ain't retarded. He's stupid, but he ain't retarded. I, I mean, I don't do shit like that. I'm just saying that Brian Dundon should not be fucking with me, all right? Why does he do that? Because he's deranged. Because he because he wants to suck my dick, and I keep telling him no. I won't let him suck my dick. So this is the consequence: is he does this shit. He sends pizzas to my house and tries to swat me. It, it's 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 faggot. If you let him, behavior. he would stop. Yeah, but it's not going to happen. So I just gonna have to tolerate this absolute faggot behavior for the foreseeable future. It's it's horrible, absolutely horrible. No consideration of that. Yeah, it's 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 pretty. It's like. Now, what about Surfer? What's your beef with him? It's a similar situation. I've told him to go away multiple times, but it's like with PPP. Um, he he integrates like if he if you know Surfer, or he knows you. He'll integrate you into his weird fucking like psychodrama this this fucking story in his head and then you become like a villain in the story of surfer and um like he did that with ppp right and now ppp is like this this satanic figure in surfer's mind uh right that represents every fucking cardinal sin from like uh greed to pride like all of them like, and uh, now I'm some sort of fucking representation of the heresy of Mormonism that, that uh, I don't know, needs to be, he just won't go away. You don't think there's any He's possibility that PPP actually is satanic? Um, it, well, you know, based on surf, like, I would say that, that, hold on, I got, Bella, knock it the fuck off! No! No! I uh, genuinely suspect that there's something corrupt about something corrupt about his doctrine because um, I would say that that more than he's a disciple of Christ, Surfer is a disciple of PPP. I would say that uh, PPP's doctrine is to use Christianity as a um, a weapon or at least a platform uh for w with which to weaponize hold on 
Hold on, I got it. The dog. It's fine. The dog's fine. Bella, please stop. What, what are you doing? The dog's okay. Oh. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, Pete, there, there's definitely something within PPP's doctrine that's off because he believes in scriptural inerrancy. He believes that the scripture can never uh, be wrong. And the problem with that is the scripture is God's will as interpreted by man. Therefore, there's always going to be an error. There's always going to be a flaw because man is flawed. Like people don't understand what that actually means. If God is perfect and we are flawed and, and the devil is absolute shit, what, what does it mean to be flawed? It means we cannot see for the beam in our eye, right? The the moat, like the beam and all that. There is a, a better way to, to put it is that we cannot perceive the fourth and fifth and sixth dimension. Like we can only perceive in three dimensions, right? Yeah, the fourth dimension is time and we don't really even understand what the fifth dimension is. Uh, only that there's evidence of it in like high science and shit, right? Like, um, it's, uh, it, the, the thing about scriptural inerrancy is anyone who believes that the scripture cannot be wrong is someone who's going to be at war with reality. If you believe that there can be no flaw in the Bible, then you will reject the Book of Mormon. And the, and Joseph Smith admitted that the Book of Mormon is not entirely translated as it should be. There's a missing portion of it. Um, Chris Namelka claims to have it, but he is a liar. Um, but like the point of the matter is, um, yeah, I think that there is something satanic about a lot of PPP's doctrine. And I think that it was something that's been there since before PPP inherited that doctrine. I think it's something that he was taught. His whole family's satanic, isn't it? Uh, okay, so there's a different... I would say heretical, not satanic. I would say that there is a heresy there that uh, leads to the doctrine being a wall that keeps others out rather than a path leading inwards. Uh, do we really know what dark practices he may be involved in, you know, that he's not open with, right? Like, um, he strikes me as cold hearted. I'll, I'll just be real with you. PPP strikes me as someone whose doctrine has taught him to be cold-hearted. I'm not saying that with any bias. That is my unbiased assessment. He is, in my opinion, your most successful student in that he is more, uh, he is better at doing what you do based on learning from you and imitating you than any, anyone else out there. Um, and that's, that's really sort of the irony of it, is that he's never going to escape your shadow. He's always going to owe everything he is uh, to someone he claims to hate. And he's always going to try to be someone he claims to hate. Everything, like, let's be real, everything he does is to try to be you. Like, that's not news. You know this. You know that he is basically your biggest fan. I've heard that. Um, well, it's obvious. It's, it, that This is the truth. He's made you his career. He's made you his career. There's not a thing you do that he does not watch. I'm aware of that, yeah. Fuck, in a sense, you're like basically the uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi to his Darth Vader here. Um, and that kind of sucks for both of you uh, in that sense. But uh, my opinion of PPP is, is that uh, he should embrace uh, the, the true doctrine. He should begin to question some a lot a lot of what he knows to be, I wouldn't say gospel, but the rules of approaching the gospel. I saw that library he had, and I was very impressed by that. I, I That's what initially made me see PPP as this great, like, uh, you know, someone who would one day be a great pastor, I used to think. Because I looked at that library and I thought, wow, he read all that. And this is before I'd ever read the Bible. I was very easily impressed by anyone with any scriptural knowledge. 
So at the time, I was very impressed by that. But then I go into I looked at what some of those books were, and uh, it's not good doctrine. Like he was taught a lot of bad doctrine, like a lot. And uh, the Church of Christ, that's what I was trying to remember. Yeah, the Church of Christ is, is wrong, very, very wrong. Do you think he's going to hell? If he, yeah, yeah, if he does not, uh, if he does not reject the, the doctrine of scriptural inerrancy, it, it could lead him to hell. Um, he's, he's definitely got to stop living for hatred and hatred's sake alone, or yeah, he's going to burn in hell. Um, I mean, I would recommend he, uh, he accept Joseph Smith as a prophet. That would be the first step. The first step would be for him to accept Joseph Smith as the prophet. He can't take any steps. Well, I mean, he could move his 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 uh, rascal towards the light. He could move his, his rascal, scooter. rascal, yeah, yeah, rascal scooter towards the proper doctrine. You know, if he invites the the spirit, the Holy Spirit, into his heart, he will see that you know the Latter Day Saints Church really is the proper path. Um. But um, I'll say this. Uh, uh, PPP is basically uh, the bad guy in the story of Ethan Ralph. Without you, if you died tomorrow, there would be no more Kino Casino. If he died tomorrow, you'd still be doing the exact same thing you're doing now. That's the truth. Because... <laughs> And the reason for that is that... Well, no, we would villain, give him a proper send-off first. Uh, but uh, then it would be back to business as usual, yeah. Well, the villain never outlives the hero. The hero can outlive the villain. The villain can be replaced. But the villain never outlives the hero. If he does, he loses relevance. Uh, this, uh, well, he's on his way. Uh, you know, he's like 600 pounds. So, um, But yeah, go ahead. But no, I would say that... Um, you know, as as we are all Christians, you know, back in the day, we used to attack the left back, back before like this. Everyone started attacking each other. You know, um, we, we would we would complain about people like Vouch and shit like and we all know the shit going on with with, with that. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. They uh, at some point it became popular or profitable to just um, you know to start drama for drama's sake. I would like the community uh, to get back to attacking the left. I would see like to see some unity there. But I mean, you've reached out in Olive Branch many times. PPP is the one who keeps like rejecting it, as I've seen. Like. Yeah, I mean, there's no, there's no, um, it, it's quite clear um, what they want for me, uh, and it's ruin and destruction uh, and death. And that um, is, and that is satanic, and that that is evil. I will say that the uh, hatred he harbors for you is blatantly evil at this point. There's something dark about it, and I'm saying that as a Christian, if he that will drag him to hell because there's no reason he should hate you. Like he doesn't, he's has he ever met you in person? Have you no. two ever been in the same room? No. So what have you ever done to him where he would actively pray for your death? So words of God, he very much believes in. Uh -huh. Yes, there's something blatant. Like if we're all bullshit aside, there is something evil about PPP's A-logging you. Uh, it, it, it's gone on way too fucking. It's way beyond Christian. You know, I started out A-logging PPP, if you want to call it A-logging. I would criticize his videos. I would criticize him as a Christian. You know, as the show actually got to be entertaining because they put more money and time into it, I, I, I moved off of that. But if we're going back to, like, the basics of Christianity... I don't think it's entertaining, uh, by the way. I think it's just low-tier schlock. It's better than anything I could produce. Uh, but then again, I usually That's sell not myself... That's a high bar. Shirt. No offense. Um, you know... Um, <laughs> Uh, and just having a set with two retards in, in there, like, I mean, that doesn't mean anything. Like, oh, yeah, okay. but look where I'm sitting, Ralph. Look where I'm sitting. Like, <laughs> now, I'm easily impressed. I won't I won't lie there. Um, I enjoy sector content, uh, but I don't mind admitting, hey, the best sector content is Ralph's sector content. <laughs> like, um, 
between you and him, I see him as basically the Frieza to your Goku. He's an interesting character, and the show wouldn't be as good without him. But like, I think it could go that, on. I think like, we could go on without him. Uh, but yeah, I understand what you're saying. Go ahead, finish. Well, your you've out, you've outlived others. I mean, again, it's it, Ralph is the main character because Ralph's the one who's going to be here at the end. Those are my like, thoughts. Yeah, but we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I, I see this as sort of the Ralph show, which is why I'm so honored to be here. I just, uh, basically, I've been watching this for like 10 years. Um, but um, it's, been a while it's like, uh, yeah, no, I, I appreciate you having me on, especially when I'm trying to operate a grift myself. Uh, so I, I am very uh, great. See, that's the thing. I don't consider what I'm doing grifting. Uh, well, you know. it's not, that's just a word. That's just yeah, a no, word. I, don't, I don't like the word. Um, all right. And all right. So, Let's call it, uh, yeah, yeah. I know they use that word all the time because they're shameless faggots. Uh, but I don't like that word. Uh, I put work into this. Now it's is it like a real job? No. But I get up. Uh, it is a job. It's not like a real job. It has benefits that a real job doesn't have, uh, but it has a lot of negatives uh, that a real job doesn't have too. But I get up every morning, uh, spend hours prepping the show and what I'm going to talk about. Now I don't prep what I'm going to say. Because I just speak off the top, like I mentioned earlier. That's how I've always done it. No, um, I don't mean to in any way. But I have to do you. guest outreach. I have to do all this stuff and set up the show and you know get the yeah. I do not in any up. way mean to disparage what you do. No, you're, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. I just don't like the word. word. I mean, there are people who are grifting, uh, and we're talking. We I, I like about that one word for my operation. I like that word for my operation because I'm very self depreciating. The character I'm playing is is very much I shit talk myself a lot. Um, there's so, so I use that term for the, for the, no, no, I know. Uh, look, I'm not trying to dress you down. I'm just saying I, the reason yeah. I say that is because, um, there's actual work put into what I do. And I, even the word donation, uh, I prefer the word contribution. Uh, and you see the contribution bar there, uh, on your screen, powerchat.live slash the Ralph retort, rumble rants, all that stuff. Um, I intend to buy a hat. You do have hats for sale. Correct? Um, you know, I I have shirts for sale, killstream.live. I'll get shop. one of those. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, I think they it, may have hats on there now, too. I'll have to look into it. But people yeah, have sold you hats should before. Get, you should. I, I, you really should. I would buy some. Especially, uh, I, would I had some before, and they sold pretty well. But I, I have Yeah, to I would that. definitely. You know like what? I could probably get some made in Mexico. Uh, actually, now I'm thinking about it. But uh, ran by I mean, ammo crate. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Rambo Sam ammo crate and chat is right. Ralph doesn't like community either, the word community, so he created the term sector. That's correct. Um, I used to call it uh, this corner of the internet, but that's not as catchy as uh, the sector, which was a term that sector I called. Is, that's I like my sector. term. <laughs> I'm the one who created that, uh, like so many of these terms around here getting thrown about. Um, yeah, I'll take full 100% credit because that's the one. I'm the one who did do that. Well, thank you for reminding me, Ammo Crate, now that you mention it. Uh, now, I'm seeing... Wait, wait. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, I tell you, I'd, I'd wear a Killstream hat before I ever wear one of those fucking gym hats. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Warhammer Imagine already declined, uh, I'm being told. Um, and Surfer... It's the one talking shit. It's on you, Surfer. That's what I just got messaged that. Uh, oh, man. Tazariak just messaged me. Hold on, sorry. You know who that is? Uh, who, who is it? Captain Tazariak. I, I, I don't know any. Look, I get a lot of stupid, really, really stupid people trying to grab my attention. No. I wouldn't. If you don't know this person, I would not recommend no, him. No, I know him. Here. He's been on the show. He's the black Hebrew Israelite with the guy that we have on the show. Oh, if he wants to. I, I, yeah, we can come on, but like, well, no, probably I don't, not going to with, with my religion. I'm probably not going to agree with his. It's just going to no, be he's like. No, uh, he's not, hold on. Wait, wait. Super chat. So Turk had used some simple notes. Can you guess what Shaggy mean when he decided to argue with your former post person about really in detail kidnapping, torturing, and raping Ryan's five year old? Oh, daughter I don't while recall that. Trying to give him a rape until she bleeds. That's Ralph. All right, now let me repeat that because I, I didn't catch it all. Uh, <laughs> let's see. 
<laughs> I don't I don't recall that conversation. Can you ask what Shaggy meant when he decided to argue with your former uh, co-host Perspic about greatly in detail kidnapping and torture? Yeah, I don't. I don't know yeah. that. Uh, I don't know. Did you yeah, do that? I don't recall that conversation. I'm sorry. All right. Also, uh, two Zaryaks messaged me at the same time. Yeah, we need to get him back soon. Captain versus Captain, somebody said. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, did you say those things? I don't really. No, I say all sorts of shit to piss off Brian. What I say to Brian isn't what I'd say to any other human being because Brian is subhuman. Right? I don't I don't treat Brian like a human being. I treat him like a fucking monkey. So I'm not gonna justify shit I say to Brian to human beings because it would be disrespectful. I'm not gonna address you the way I'd address a monkey. I'm gonna what am I gonna treat you like a monkey? No, no, no. Now Brian Dunn isn't a fucking human being. So I talk to him the way I talk to a fucking uh chimp or something. You, know, you shouldn't take anything I say to Brian Dunn seriously because he's not a serious person. He's a ridiculous person. He's a silly person. He's an absurd person. Uh, you don't you don't talk to Brian Dunn and take what he says seriously. So why would you speak seriously to him? I just babble bullshit at him. I just say whatever the fuck comes to mind at Brian Dunn and I try and make it as offensive as possible so that he has something to screech about for the next two weeks because that's what he really wants, right? He wants to get outraged. He wants to get pissed off. I'm just being. Yeah, a I'm gonna be to honest. Brian. I don't give a fuck what happens to Brian Dunn or anybody. Yeah, says he no one gives a so, fuck what happens uh, to Brian. Dunn. No one yeah. gives a fuck. About I mean, it might sound cold, but I don't give a fuck. I wouldn't care if his whole yeah. fucking house just got blown away. And that's away the honest truth. Right Doesn't it feel yeah. good to tell the truth? Yeah, yeah. I don't have to lie. I wouldn't care if a fucking tornado just tore through his whole house with him and everybody he loves inside of it. I wouldn't give a fuck. Uh, fuck him and the horse he rode in on. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Brian Dunn. So I couldn't care less. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I think that's how everyone feels. I just now, I don't support I don't, anybody doing anything to him or his family. Well, no, of course not. Uh, and, you know, and if you did I say that, I disavow. If you did, oh, wait, let me finish window. talking. Don't talk over me. Um, if you did say that, of course I disavow. But uh, if he got, if every, you know, literally, if a tornado just took him and everybody he knows out, I wouldn't care. Uh, wouldn't give a fuck. So you won't, you won't find any. Offense for me. I don't give a shit. But I do have to disavow if you if you did say. Of course, like of course, yeah. of course. I disavow too. I disavow yeah. too. Um, yeah, he's a piece of garbage. Uh, I don't give a fuck about him, and he's fucking like super mentally ill. I uh, should be in a padded cell somewhere, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, that's. I, I co-sign that as a professional opinion. As a psych tech, my professional opinion is yeah, he should be in a padded cell, probably like getting beaten. Yeah. And again, I don't support anybody doing anything to him or saying those type of things, but I'm just being real. He's just like lower than pond scum, in my opinion. Uh, he's right there with PPP in terms of people i just like to see just absolutely. Again, don't support anybody doing anything to him or anything illegal, but if the worst tra if he got hit by a train tomorrow, I would laugh about it. Um, same for PVP. Like these are garbage people who uh, have done everything they can okay, to fuck can up my life, and, and they can just fucking – Go. Milo Yiannopoulos. I'm a big fan of Milo Yiannopoulos. Of I always have been. Are you still friends with him? I don't want to talk about that. I haven't talked. Oh, about him sorry. All right. All right. All right. But um, anything you don't want to talk about, you'll just say the word and never bring it up again. We're cool though. I haven't talked to him in a while. But yeah, I don't. Ha I don't have any beef with him or anything. Yeah, I. Uh, I'm just like just a huge fan. That that's all. Um, yeah, big fan of Milo. He he like inspired me to take better care of myself back in the day and shit. How do you do that? Uh, you know, he, he just used to talk about how you shouldn't hate yourself and how like, you know, basically it was sort of like Jordan Peterson to me. He was just, he, I, I, it's been so long. I can't even remember this shit, but he would give these, like he had these videos and he'd say shit and, and I'd think like, huh, well, you know what? Maybe, maybe I am not such a useless piece of shit. Maybe I should fucking uh, go get a haircut. Maybe I should, uh, you know, spend that money, you know, on uh, fucking some new clothes. Maybe I should fucking 
give a shit about how I look. Uh, stuff like that. I mean, like, he was a pretty inspiring uh, fucking orator back in the day. Um, um, I, I don't know. I just, I always felt that he got a raw deal with, when the way they ambushed him in the media. Like, he's a fag. Of course, he's going to have fucked up views on, on, on sex. But other than that, I always saw him as, like, um, the good outcome of what a Catholic can be. There's no restriction, Austin. It's just like, what? What am I going to say? We're cool. I haven't talked to him in a while. I mean, there's nothing else to say about Milo. Like, uh, he was in the picture we had him on this he came on the show last summer um but i haven't talked to him in a while what a few months or whatever he sent me something um but not about any stories or anything just there wasn't an ulterior motive there i i just i'm just kind of a fan but uh no, yeah, but he, was, he wondered why i shut it down well i mean i didn't really shut it down we're talking about it now um but i don't there's no um there's not much to say, basically. Yeah, I basically just told you everything right there. Um, you know, I talked to him a few months ago. We're still cool. If I was to message him now, he would respond, I'm sure. Um, but there's nothing. I like that he's say. an advocate for Christianity. I, was, I like I like that he strongly advocates for Christianity. Um, that that's an easy way to win me over, though. I'm very I'm very easily impressed by that. Uh, fuck, I was a fan of Joyce Meyer before I realized what a pile of shit she was. Um, well, yeah, he does. He does promote, uh, specifically Catholicism, uh, pretty heavily, I would say. Um, but yeah, there's nothing there. Um, the last time I talked to him, uh, I'm trying to think when, I can't remember now, but something had happened. I don't know. It was two or three months ago. Um, just a little exchange or whatever. He's in my, he's always on telegram. He's in the telegram chat. So he's still there. Somebody goes in there and starts talking. You can at Milo. And I'm, he'll oftentimes come in and respond. So uh, yeah, maybe maybe one day. They they say don't meet your heroes though. I mean, they, they do say uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> like um, shit. Anything else? Uh, fuck. What's your favorite sports team? Uh, what sport? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, football. The Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. Baseball? I've been a Chiefs fan since I was a kid, by the way, and we weren't winning Super Bowls uh, then, so I'm not a front runner. But uh, baseball, the Atlanta Braves. Yeah. Most of my family are um, Cardinals fans, but my mom was a Braves fan because they used to show Braves on uh, WTBS is what they used to call it uh, back in the day, and so she always loved the Braves, and uh, I became a Braves fan because when I was a kid, all their games were on TBS as well. And so, yeah, that's how I got to be a Braves fan. A lot of heartache uh, in the 90s, but we did get that one World Series in 95 and then another one not too long ago. So, yeah. I'm a 49ers fan myself. Uh... Yeah, you know, I was a 49ers fan when I was a real small kid, and then they traded away Joe Montana. But they they make him. a lot of bad decisions. They do, do a lot. Of well, it was shit. not a bad decision for them because they got a what they got a Super Bowl out of it uh, in '94. Um, but uh, Steve Young was pretty good too. But uh, when they I, it, wait, it's just such a gay pride team now. Well, when it's they just, traded Montana, I became a Chiefs fan because I was like, "Y'all traded Joe Montana? Fuck you! Uh, I'm gonna be a Chiefs fan now." They traded him to the Chiefs for those who don't know, uh, and that's how I got to be a Chiefs fan. And also, they were the closest team to me when I was a kid. Um, but that's not why. It was because they traded Montana. Yeah. Um, I mean, a kid, like, I was, like, what, seven or something when they traded him. I was like, you can't trade Yeah, no, I, um, I was uh, – I, my mom was 49ers fan, so I grew up with 49ers. It's just the, the team my family always liked, right? Well, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell yeah, you about my I mom, like in the Braves. My, the rest of my family are Cardinals fans, but uh, yeah. I always thought the 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 uh, Raiders were cool. But I can remember my mom saying, "No, we don't like the Raiders. We're 49ers fan. That's our team." So I was like, "Okay, yes, we're 49ers." Uh, but uh, the Raiders, uh, of course, they're arch enemies of the Chiefs. So I'm not a Raiders fan. But if I wasn't a Chiefs fan, I might be a Raiders fan. They, they've uh, got the coolest merch. They, yeah, they have got the, the coolest, coolest merch, and they also just like they don't give a fuck. Raiders just. 
And Las they Vegas. Don't care. That Las Vegas now. Yeah, well, they were Oakland and L.A. before that. But Oh, uh, you like Vegas too, huh? I fucking love Las Vegas. I, Vegas is my favorite fucking place on the planet. Yeah, I've been there a few times. Uh, what's your favorite? What's your favorite hotel? I like the Luxor. The Luxor. Uh, have you had the? You ever go back there? You gotta have the prime rib at the Luxor. It's the best prime rib you've ever had. I yeah, the last time I went to Vegas, I stayed at the Luxor, uh, Luxor Casino. Uh, I shouldn't have went. Uh, it was the start of a bad, bad time. Actually, that was a big mistake to go to Las Vegas. But um, yeah, I stayed at the Luxor actually like, the last time I went. Um, Shit, maybe uh, maybe instead of a Mexico trip, you and I should do a Vegas trip. Uh, I don't want to go to Vegas. I don't, I don't even want to go to the United States. So fair uh, enough. You know what? I can I can sympathize with Biden in charge. It's it's a massive. I'm fucking not going toilet. to Vegas. I'll be a sitting duck out there in Vegas. There's no point in that. Um, uh, right, you got a log psychopaths basically. Uh, yeah, no, there's uh, no point in me going to Vegas, but. Uh, the Luxor is connected to Mandalay Bay and also the Excalibur. All those three are connected together. Mandalay Bay, I like. I said the Excalibur as a kid. If you ask but me my favorite, remember. it would probably be the Bellagio, though. Um, but I would just go hang out at the Bellagio. They charge a shit ton of money to stay there. I could have paid it, but it's like, why? You can just go hang out at the Bellagio and go go back to Luxor. Yeah. Or go back to Excalibur. I've stayed out a lot. The Excalibur Casino. I've stayed at Park MGM, um, a lot of different casinos. The Rio, I've stayed at, but I wouldn't recommend. But uh, they have low rates there, so. Yeah, no. Um, yeah, the Luxor is the best prime rib in the world. Best prime rib I've ever fucking tasted. It's great, and they've got this radish sauce that's like equally great. It's really fucking good, and it's not. Yeah, it's like expensive, but it's not that expensive. It's like it's not that pricey. It's good. By the way, uh, uh, somebody asked me if there's casinos here. Yes, uh, there are a couple of casinos here, and there's some in Cancun. I know they're not like Vegas, but uh, yeah, they have casinos and sports books uh, as well inside the casino. I don't. I, I'm not a gambler. There's another reason I like Vegas. Uh, probably equally bad. But, um, whores, yeah, that's why I like Vegas. That's why you just walk down the street, you pick them or whatever color you want, whatever color. So it actually has black prostitutes that are pretty. Now, around here, the black prostitutes are ain't oh god, they are grisly old things, like you don't want to touch those fucking hags. No, 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 no. The Asian whores are pretty damn good, but if you want any other flavor of pussy under the sun. You're going to have to travel out to the desert to get it because uh, the fucking skanks around here on the streets are like, they're, they're about as fucking diseased as the used condom lying on the road beside them. You don't want to fucking touch those bitches. Um, the Mirage was mentioned in chat. Um, I actually saw Ron White at the Mirage, uh, but I wasn't staying there. But I, I did like the Mirage Casino. I, th I heard they were closing it or sold it or something. I can't remember now. Um, but, yeah, I saw Ron White there, uh, and he was great. So... I don't know if you know who that is, but um, comedian. Yes, yes, I do. Blue collar comedy. Yeah, yes. Ron White. Yeah, yeah. The no, I do know him. The I used to style. watch him when I was a kid. Yeah. Um. What do you want to leave us with? Yeah. Oh, um. Uh, Church is true. Read the Book of Mormon. <laughs> Well, I appreciate you taking time. We'll have to have you back, maybe, uh, just to have you. Um, oh. Let me see how some. Yeah, if you. it's ever, yeah, if it's ever relevant to have like uh, Mormon eccentric on, I'd be happy to fill fill in for you. I'd be, I mean, I, I always happy to uh, be on the kill stream. You know. Um, uh, Okay. By Just the way, reach out if if you ever if you ever uh, something it comes up where I would be. Uh, um, relevant. Yeah. No. Again, I'll 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 see the these uh, info blurbs here. Uh, after Shaggy made those comments, allegedly uh, Brian hung around with him. It's Brian who doesn't have a problem with those comments. Is what I was just told. Uh, yeah, no. So, yeah. Fuck Brian. I, fuck Brian. I would never hang out with Brian. Brian is a faggot. I don't like him and never would like him. Fuck Brian. Fuck Brian to hell. Yeah, he's just he's, an honest loser. Yeah. Um, uh, no, don't ever believe like... Nobody listen, cares, I, Brian. I don't give a fuck. 
Yeah, I, I piss on Brian. I piss on his name. No, I don't piss say, on don't, don't, don't. You said right. enough. You said enough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, no, you said enough. Uh, but uh, I think we could all imagine. Um, but I appreciate you being here tonight. We'll have to have you back. It's just we, we've been talking for a while now. I don't want to drag it too long. Um, but, uh, yeah, I appreciate you being here tonight, man, and, and stay safe out there on the boat. It, yep. Um, well, I'm, I'm not on the boat right now. The well, boat yeah, yeah, yeah. Long. James Gartner sent $5. Yeah, we'll be, uh, I, I got a lot zero, of zero on We, uh, you know, we, we a fender fell off a, a, a cruise ship and had been rotting at sea for months, and we found it. And oh, I told you about that already. Yeah, I'll yeah. upload that. All right, upload it. Send it to me. I'll play it on the show. Awesome. Yeah. And you take it easy, brother. Right, we'll get you back on sometime relatively soon. Cool. All right, man. Take it easy. Yep. There we go. Mormon Shaggy live on the kill stream. First official. Thanks for watching this clip. This is Willow. Remember to like and subscribe.